While there may be plenty of you out there with Shimano's DI2 system on your bike, were you aware of all the different features that the system has to offer, or were you completely in the dark and didn't know there was more to it? Well in this video we're going to check out what you can adjust using Shimano's eTube app and Bluetooth module. First off, you're going to need Shimano's eTube app on your phone or other compatible device. You're going to need the Bluetooth module itself, the EWWU111, and a short DI2 cable too. So if you haven't got those parts sorted out, it's worth getting those done first and then coming back to this video. But what exactly is Shimano's wireless unit EWWU111? Well, quite simply, it allows your DI2 gears to connect to your phone or compatible head unit, such as my Wahoo Roam. Whilst the name of the module sounds quite complicated, it's actually super easy to fit and today we're going to fit it in line with our DI2 system because we've got an integrated battery in the seat tube here, so we're only going to need a few basic tools such as an Allen key and a tool to remove and install the DI2 cables. As I mentioned, the module is super easy to fit and it's placed in line with the DI2 system anywhere you've got good access to. Like I said, we're going to do that on the seat post battery tube today, um, but it could also be fitted up at the junction box at the front, anywhere you've got good access to, depending on the setup of your bike, it's just a case of opening the connector up, placing the module in with that short cable in line, and then making a tidy install. If you haven't got a seat tube battery like myself, the module is super small, it can pretty much be installed anywhere on your bike you decide you've got good access to. It's quite simply a case of unplugging one of the cables, plugging that into the end of the module, plugging your spare cable you've got here into the other end, and placing that back in line to the component you've unplugged. It's actually that simple. So let's make a start. First off, before you remove the seat post, it's a good idea, like I have, to just mark where your saddle height is before you take the seat post out and make life a little bit simpler when you put it all back together at the end. But we can start with our 5mm Allen key and just make a start here, removing the seat post. One of the key things to remember as we are undoing the seat post and taking it out is to set this aside and make sure we don't drop this cable back inside the frame once we've unplugged it because it's just a bit of a pain to fish it back out. With the seat post removed, we can take our special Shimano DI2 cable tool and use the end of this to nice and carefully remove the cable from the end of the battery, like so. Carefully unclip that. And now is when you really want to make sure you don't drop this cable back into your seat tube because it's going to be a right pain. So tuck this down to the side, make sure you don't drop that. Then we can take our wireless module, which I've already installed the cable on, so that just clips in the same as any other DI2 cable. And we just got to take this, take our cable that's attached to the bike, get the two, and we can use our DI2 tool again, using the slightly different end, fit that into there, and click that into place, and that's it. There's the module fitted in line to the cable, ready for this end to go back attached to the battery. Into here, take your tool again, So that's the module installed and like I said earlier, it really is that simple. I've left the seat post out of the bike just to make sure we can connect to the system nice and easily without running into any problems of connection loss. Another point it's worth noting is that sometimes this module can actually rattle when you fit it inside the frame, so you could put a little piece of foam around it to stop that happening. And I'm using a carbon fibre frame here, but if you're not using a carbon fibre frame, you could sometimes find you'll struggle to get a good connection when installing the module inside of the frame. So if you do have a metal frame, it's worth installing the module externally to make sure you get perfect connection every time. Next up, we're going to need to pair the module to our phone. And first, we're going to need to activate the DI2 system by pressing and holding the junction box button until the lights activate. The junction box on this bike is fitted up here, but your junction box could be located in the bar end plug, underneath the stem. Some bikes even have it fitted into the seat tube as well. So, depending on what bike you've got, your junction box, just press the button on that until the lights activate. Having activated the DI2 system, the next step is to open the eTube app and follow the on-screen instructions to connect to the module. And an important point to note, which isn't always obvious, is that the passcode for the module is actually six zeros, and you'll be prompted to set your own passcode next as well if you want to do that. Having connected to the module, your phone will then display all the different components of your bike that you've connected to and now have access to. But before diving in and changing a whole host of different features you have access to, it's important to move across here to update the system and scroll down. You can see here there's quite a few components that need updating. But the first one is important to update is the Bluetooth module itself and that'll make sure you've got a really reliable connection and won't run into any problems further down the line. 
So let's make sure we find the module, click on that, and apply any updates that are required. When updating the module or any component in the system, it is super crucial to let it complete the process fully and not disconnect the app or your phone from any of the components. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a situation where your gears aren't working and it's a trip down to the bike shop, and nobody wants that. Having successfully connected to our phone and then updated any of the components that need it, we can actually look to refit our seat post into the bike. But before doing that, it's super crucial, as I mentioned earlier, to follow the on-screen instructions to disconnect your phone from the DI2 unit correctly to make sure you don't run into any problems and make sure it continues working perfectly. So you've got your Bluetooth module fitted, but what actually are the host of additional features that you've got access to? First off, you can change the speed of the shifting, which is going to mean as you press the lever, the rear derailleur, you can slow down or speed up how quickly that operates. You can assign multi-shift, which is going to mean as you hold the buttons in, the rear derailleur will continue to shift until you let go of the button. You can assign additional buttons to the front, so you can have sprint buttons chucked in behind the levers or shift buttons at the tops of the bars when you're riding at the tops. You can also change the shifting profiles of the front derailleur here, so you can have manual, semi-synchro and also fully synchronised, which manual of course, you've got total control of the front derailleur. Semi-synchro, you have control of the front derailleur, but as you operate that, the rear derailleur is also going to shift one or two gears to compensate for that gear change and fully synchronised where, as you operate the rear derailleur, the front derailleur will automatically operate to compensate to make sure you're in the most efficient gear possible. There are a host of other features you've got access to, and one of my favourites is actually the additional little buttons on the top of the levers there. And that's something many people are not aware of, so it's quite a cool feature to make use of. My favourite thing is to set these up to be shift buttons to actuate the rear derailleur but also you can assign these buttons to operate your Wahoo head unit, which I suppose we should dive in and look at next. To make use of these hidden buttons on the top here, we're gonna to have to open up the eTube app and go into both the left and right shifter to assign the buttons to whatever job we want them to do. So that could be operating the rear derailleur, for example, or what we're gonna do next, set them up to operate our head unit. When you're in the app and trying to decide what functions you want to assign to these little buttons at the top here, if you want to operate your head unit, you need to change them so that the left-hand lever is activated as D-Fly Channel 1, that's what Shimano call it, and the right-hand lever is activated as D-Fly Channel 2. That'll ensure that later on we can use these to operate the pages on our head unit. Now we can take our head unit and pair the module on the bike to the unit itself. First off, we're going to need to activate the gears just to make sure the system is awake and you can do that just by operating one of the buttons on the levers and then searching through on your head unit the same way as you would add any sensor. So scroll down in the menu to sensors, click add sensor. As it says on the screen, hold the sensor near the bike, so we'll do that. So you can hold it near the bike and allow the head unit to search for the sensor. Once it's done that, we can select the relevant one from the list to make sure we connect to the bike correctly. So let's test out our handiwork. See these, press the button, and it should operate. Hoo -hoo -hoo. Hell yeah. As we can see, pressing the right-hand button on our shifter is exactly the same as pressing the right-hand button on our head unit. And pressing the left-hand button on our shifter is the same as pressing the left-hand button on the head unit itself. And another handy little tip, which lots of people might not have realized, is if you hold these buttons in, either on the left or right, it's the same as operating the zoom in and zoom out buttons on the head unit itself. So we can do that. Zoom in nice and close. Then we can hold this one to again, zoom out to make sure no one knows where I live. To make best use of the features on your head unit, you need to set up a dedicated page on your head unit itself or the app that accompanies your head unit. And here we can see the page I've got set up to give a nice clear visual representation of the rear derailleur gears and then the front derailleur gears. And also we can go to the next page, we've got a numerical representation of that. So it makes it nice and simple, you have super clear visual or numerical, whichever takes your fancy. And then we can go back again, down into our DI2 gears, click more and we can see our battery status to make sure we don't get caught short having no battery halfway through our ride. 
So there you have it, some DI2 hacks and settings that you probably didn't know existed. Hopefully you've learned something cool today and you can impress your mates at the weekend with it. If you've got any questions, of course, let us know in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech and also let us know your favourite DI2 settings as well. Thanks for watching.